Madden NFL 24 on EA Sports, and we've got a showdown in the AFC North. It's the Cincinnati Bengals and the Baltimore Ravens. All that and more coming up next. Some might say it's cold. Others, like myself and my partner, we say this is football weather as we welcome you to Chile M&T Bank Stadium near the Inner Harbor in Baltimore. Straight ahead, it's a rematch from last year's AFC Wild Card game as it'll be the Cincinnati Bengals taking on the Baltimore Ravens. Alongside Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. At CD, it was a bit of a hectic offseason for the Ravens. The questions at quarterback, they went all the way till draft night. But in the end, Lamar Jackson is back, and these folks in Maryland, they couldn't be happier. No, they couldn't, and listen, they'll take a hectic offseason if it ends this way. Lamar Jackson back, taking every snap for their Baltimore Ravens. Brand new offensive coordinator. Don't be surprised if the ball's in the air a little bit more than what we've seen in the past. Meanwhile, for the visiting Bengals, it's a team that's been to the Super Bowl three times in their history, has never won it, but there's just a sense that this could be the year, and you don't disagree. I certainly do not, because go back two seasons ago, many thought it was a fluke that they got to the Super Bowl. Well, they came back the next year, and they got to the AFC Championship game, and were extremely disappointed they didn't get back to the Super Bowl. The pieces are in place, the confidence is high. Justin Tucker set to boom this one away. And off we go from M&T Bank Stadium. And no run back here, so they'll bring it out to the 25. Here come the Bengals now to take over. And they're brought out by the former Washington Husky, undrafted back in 2019, Jake Browning. Brandon, I know he isn't at the status of some of the elite names in this league, but I do know he's an absolute fighter because he's heard all the criticism. He's read the articles that say he isn't good enough to be the starter, and he absolutely does not care. All he wants to do is prove every doubter wrong and show that he belongs in this spot. Now Browning. Man open, that's Jamar Chase complete. And they work this well upfield across the 45. 23 yards on the play. I don't care who you put on him, he's going to be a handful in one-on-one -on -one throws. Yeah, right now, you're right. They're in man-to-man, -man, maybe need some safety help. I would say that'd be a good idea. Double-team him somehow. I'm going to have to make someone else beat me rather than let him shred my defense. To throw, Browning. Throwing over the middle, and it's incomplete. They'll put a check mark in the box where the defense coordinator was saying, how well can we stay with these receivers if we're in man coverage? Because he just did it on that one, forced the incompletion. That allowed him to get bolder with his pass rush, won't it? Absolutely. Frees up your guys elsewhere. Here's second and ten. Here's Browning. He'll drop this one down to Mixon. And they get to him after a gain of six to the 46. I like it, I like it, I like it. Get everyone involved in the passing game, and you know you can create those great mismatches throwing it to your guys out of the backfield. And on the first drive, that can also help establish some rhythm, right? I think so. It gets everyone involved. They feel like they're part of it. It really gets them amped up as they go forward. Again, he'll drop to throw. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And he is going to have a Bengals first down. They needed four. He doubled that. He wound up getting eight. Well, we know he can run the football, too, but he's a good pass catcher. and That's been on display here, Charles, on this opening drive. And we certainly have seen the benefits of what he did in the offseason, which was spend more time with wide receivers, working on routes, working on cuts, in order to make himself a more complete running back and even more of a threat downfield. Now a three-time 1,000-yard rusher, Joe Mixon. It's a six-yard pickup, and it gets him to second and four. A quick burst there, and he nicely bit off a pretty decent game. Here now, second and four. Off 
Play action. Browning. And the catch made. It's Tyler Boyd. And he's going to be taken down with the first down at the Ravens 19. The Bengals passing game finding a rhythm. They've got another first. And the pocket's been protected pretty good here so far on the opening drive. We always talk about confidence in runners and catchers and quarterbacks. How about the protection detail? They're not allowing anyone near the guy throwing the football. Now a play fake here on first down. And he's going to go down. Back at the 27-yard line, he's sacked. Multiple players combined for their team's first sack of the game. But defensively on the previous play, they gave up a pretty good chunk of yardage, but right there, they got a good portion of it right back. And if we just flip it around from the offensive perspective, took a nice step forward, and how about a couple of leaps backwards after that play? They've got to figure out a big call coming up here to try and gain that yardage back. Got to imagine the pass rush will be equally intense here on second down following the sack. It's second and 18. Browning throw there taken in by Smith. And they've got it inside the 10 at the 8. That puts him in excellent position first and goal after a gain of 19. A lot of precision being shown on this opening drive. They've been methodical. They've been crisp. And as a reward, they're going to be set up with an early first and goal. Back to throw. Browning. Toward the pylon, but it's incomplete. I like his awareness in the pocket there. Nowhere to go with the football. So instead of forcing it to the sideline, he's just going to put this one into the harbor and live to fight another down without getting wet. Nothing on first down, so the ball remains at the eight-yard line. Second and goal. Operating from the gun. Browning. And oh, it'll be intercepted. Kyle Hamilton puts it. And the Ravens are going to take possession of the football as they force the turnover on the opening drive. Well, Brent, as they say in popular culture, this one's going to leave a mark because they can see the end zone, but it'll stay out of reach because of their error. All their offensive teammates have to give the quarterback right now, offer a little bit of encouragement because what's done is done. Let's get them next time out. The Ravens offense set to go to work, and it's Lamar Jackson now at his sixth NFL campaign who will lead the way. Early part of his career, defense has really had to focus on his running ability, and they still do. But now, he's turned himself into a true dual-threat quarterback. When he plants his cleats in the ground and turns it loose, good things happen downfield. Jackson and the Ravens come up now first and 10 at their own 20-yard line. They'll start by running the option to the right. And he'll get this up to the 34-yard line. First down yardage on the first play of the drive, given 14. Well, partner, for a few years there, we thought this read option play was going to take over the whole NFL. It seemed like everyone was using it. But it has been scaled back considerably in the last few seasons, mainly because people are worried about their quarterbacks getting hit. But when you call it at the right time and you use it properly, you see the type of gains you can get. A nice chunk of yardage there by the quarterback. to the 30 before being taken down. 36 yards on the play. I guess we got a good idea about what the game plan is for attacking the secondary. No beating around the bush with this curve. His first throw of the game is a deep shot and it connects. That's a tendency breaker right there because normally you build up to the big shot but not in this case. So the big play has him all the way down to the 30 now for first and 10. First carry now for Gus Edwards. Try to find a lane, but instead he'll get back to the line of scrimmage and no more. Officially no gain on the play, and it's second down. As usual, the hallmark of a good run defense, linebackers making plays near the line of scrimmage. Absolutely nowhere to run there. Second and 10. Now it's Jackson. Right side, there's Lightroom with it. There they are stop him but he does take it all the way to the two that one nearly 30 yards 29 officially boy how about 
the speed with which this offense can get down the field. It's taking them no time at all to get down here. And now they're set up for the first and goal. First and goal, a chance to convert that early turnover into points. Edwards trying to get to the goal line, but he's going to be stopped just short at the one. It's a gain of a yard, and it'll set up second and goal. Good work there, holding him out on first down, and this is going to be a battle down here on the goal line. Can they hold their ground for two, maybe even three more plays? Second and goal from the one. And they'll try to pound it in with recovery. And he'll get in. Touchdown, Baltimore. Patrick Ricard punching it in from a yard away. And the Ravens use the early turnover to get on the board first here in this one. And when the smaller guy can't power it across the goal line, Charles, sometimes you need to go with a fullback. They did. It worked. What's that thing about force and mass? How's that? Oh, yeah, yeah. Force equals mass times acceleration. Oh, that's big-time stuff. That's, that's from the same guy the apple dropped on his head. <laughs> Tucker able to connect on the extra point, and that makes the score 7-0. Tucker now to kick it away following the touchdown. And he won't return this one. He'll go down to a knee, and they'll start at the 25. Cincinnati coming back onto the field here for their second drive. They threw an interception the first time they had the football, wound up leading to a touchdown the other way. How do you approach drive number two? Going back to your game plan coming in, everyone has matchups that they like better than others where they think they have an advantage, dial up some of those plays. Try and go to those spots and get your offense moving. Here's Joe Mixon as they start on the ground. And he's upended at the 33, following a good pickup of eight. Now you often say that sort of opens the playbook now, second and short. What do you think, early shot here? I like where you're going. Obviously, we've been together for a while because you know me. I want to take that shot early and loosen things up. Here's a second and two now from the 33. It's Mixon on the counter. And running room scarce here. He's going to be stopped in his tracks at the line of scrimmage. He got maybe a half yard at most, but officially they'll be left with a third and two. The good run on first down followed up by a not-so-good run on second down. Now let's find out they're going to stick with the run here on third down. A lot of people would love to see some play action here. I say go with your best running play over your best blocker. And they'll find the open man. That's complete. And he is going to have a Bengals first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Well, starting drive number two off on the right foot. Completion for the first down. Drive one is the that had to be pretty frustrating because they moved the football. They just didn't get any points out of it. But warm up QB two is bringing the back up. <laughs> I mean, my goodness, you take them downfield and you don't score points. You know, I'm being totally facetious <laughs> here, right? I'm just kidding. Nice first drive. Rarely do teams score on every single drive in a game, but they like what they did there. They just hope they can pay it off this time with some points. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. And a smart play there. He's probably saying, I wish I would have done that on the last drive instead of throwing the interception. Now a second and ten. To throw again. Browning. Open man. Chase complete. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. Second catch for him today, and it'll wind up a first down. And that's how you shake off the interception you threw on the opening drive, come back and throw another strike, and gain nice yardage. And I give credit to two people on this one. The man throwing the ball and the person calling the plays. They're not shutting him down early in this game. Browning's throw caught by Higgins. And they're able to work this to the 25 before it's all said and done. 
22 yards on the catch and run, a first down. And this was a nice example of an offensive coordinator scheming his guy open, just a little underneath route, just trying to free up some space, and it worked awfully well. Got him not just space, but plenty of room to run after the catch to pick up really nice yardage. Back to throw again. His throw incomplete. Well, a momentary speed bump there with that throw, partner. The defense had other ideas, and they're trying to mount a small stand before this drive reaches the end zone. An incomplete pass leads to second and 10 from the 25. They'll look to throw again. And he gets this in the hands of Mixon. They get six. That'll leave them with third and four. And just in general, Charles, on a play like that, how tough is it for the defense to account for a running back essentially being a receiver downfield? It's very difficult, especially if the running back has skills like a receiver, and you're aware of that before the game even begins. So throughout your practice sessions, you're going to want to be aware of him. Where is he lining up? What can he do? What kind of damage can he do? And it's a fumble, and it's picked up by the Ravens. And they put it on the ground here on the second drive, and of course, Charles, that follows drive number one where they have the INT. Makes you wonder what's going on with this team because a lot of times we can attribute it to nerves, but maybe it's a lack of focus. Maybe it is, it's the preparation for the game. Maybe they just came into a little lackadaisical because that's just not looking good at all. That's just not the football that we came here to see. After the fumble recovery, it's Jackson. A short one there, caught by Likely. And able to get this across the 20 before going out of bounds. Call it a gain of six on the play, and it'll be second down. That's a staple of this offense. Drag route to the tight end. Yeah, he's unable to use his size to break off much more yardage after the catch, but still an effective gain nonetheless. Jackson going to give this one to Edwards. Fights forward for only about a yard up to the 21. A big part of a middle linebacker's job is being able to take on blocks and then go make plays. But the best ones, they have those big guys in front of them playing defensive line to hold blockers off of them and allow them to flow sideline to sideline and make the big hits. Jackson looking to throw on third. And he is caught. And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. His first catch, good for 16 and a first. Well, as a coach, you absolutely love seeing your offense find their rhythm early, and that's exactly what we've seen so far. They had a touchdown on their opening drive, and now they connect here for another nice gain for a first down. This offense is moving the ball well, exactly as he drew it up in practice. Edwards now on first and ten. And he'll fight forward on the straight-ahead running for just a couple of yards, second down. Certainly a nice job there by the defense rallying to the football and getting him on the ground. But I think the play gets made by the defensive front because if they can't get upfield, their job is to go ahead and get low, almost get into a ball sometimes, stack things up, and make it difficult for the runner to find a hole. Now Jackson taps this forward, jet sweep. What a great read by the secondary. They come up to stop that touch pass before it can even get back to the line. On third down, Jackson. A nice little juke. He'll be taken down as that will take us to the end of the first quarter of play. After one, seven, nothing on EA Sports. Second quarter now from Baltimore. It's the Ravens in possession as they've got it with a first and ten.
Play action. Now Jackson. This one into the hands of Aguilar. He'll get this one down near the 20 yard line. Just shy of the 12. They got 29 yards that time. So many times in my career, I've heard coaches talk about completions are one thing. As long as we're there at the catch and we get guys on the ground, we can live with that. But if you're going to give up 10, 12, 15 yards after the catch, then your defense is going to be in a lot of trouble. Jackson on first down. And that one too high and incomplete. Yeah, their back's up against the wall a little bit, and they come through by forcing an incompletion. Now they've got to continue to ratchet up the intensity a couple of more times and get off the field before giving up any more yardage. So now second and ten after the incompletion on first down. Here's Jackson. And his throw here is incomplete. Well, every point certainly counts at this stage of the game. But after driving so far, you absolutely know they want to finish it with six instead of three. Well, this drive, they're a perfect two of two on third down conversions, but they need a full 10 yards here. And Jackson throwing once more. And that is too far out in front of his intended target. Incomplete. Has to be a little bit of frustration there. Back-to-back -back incompletions. Receivers blanketed on both attempts, this time on third down. So Jackson will head to the Ravens' sideline, and on comes Justin Tucker for the field goal try. From the right hash, it's a 38-yard attempt. Tucker's kick is good, and that will extend their lead even further. So another scoring drive there, Charles, and an early two-score lead. You'd like the six there, partner, but you'll take the three, and I think they have to be happy about the way they moved the ball in these first two drives. They have to feel good about their opportunities the rest of the game. Tucker now following the made field goal set to kick it away. Taken at the goal line. And he'll take it a yard or so past the 20, call it the 21. The Bengal offense now gets set to head back out onto the field. And job one here, Charles, just keep possession of the football. Two drives, two turnovers to this point. You're exactly right, Doctor. Hippocratic Oath, first do no harm. And right now, they're harming themselves on offense. I like that. No one is mistaking me for a doctor, though. But thank you, Dr. Davis. They go play action here on first down. And he completes it to Bowling. And they're going to get this beyond the 40 before he's taken down. The end result, 21 yards. Certainly no settling into the drive there. They came right out on the first play and attacked the middle of the field for a big gainer and a first down. One play has him up past the 40 already and another first and 10. Looking to throw. Browning, short throw to Smith. The result, only four yards there on the play, and that'll make it second down. They gave up the completion there, but this is what zone defenses count on, catching the ball and not much run after the catch. From the 46-yard line, a second down and six. Back to throw. Browning. Looking middle, and it's incomplete. His back has been a dependable safety back all game, so he went back to him when his first read was covered. Just unable to connect, so the play results in no game. And the Bengals on third down. They've been okay, two for three thus far. This will be third and six. They'll stick with the passing game as he looks to throw. And that one too wide and incomplete. The passing game not in sync here early. And now it's fourth down. It's going to be another frustrating end to a drive here. This offense, they've not been able to get anything going in this first half. 
And now it's going to be time to gather on the sideline and try to figure out what's going wrong. Who has an idea? Who has a plan? Time to implement it. And this punt will go out of bounds. I think it'll be inside the 25, and it will. Right at the 24-yard line is where they'll spot it. Baltimore about ready to go on offense. And last time they were able to churn some clock. They got the field goal, added on to their lead, but that was a drive that was so long, it should have ended in a touchdown. You know that's how they felt. And we'll both be headed to the airport after the game, but we probably should go to the post-game press conference because <laughs> someone's going to ask the head coach about this drive, and he's going to profess that he was happy to get points. And we know that's not true. Okay, after this type of a drive, not getting a touchdown, a huge disappointment. First down yardage on the first play of the drive, 14 yards. And partner, they're locked in man coverage out left and end up running a crossing route. Rounded it a little bit more than a slant. And he's just going to angle himself towards the right side of the field, and that's very difficult for a defender to shadow him across all that ground. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. Off the option, here's Edwards. And he'll be brought down just shy of the 45. Five yards on the carry. Good pickup on first down. Nice satisfying run on first down for the offense. Picking up five, which means defensively, the thought process is entirely different. You don't want to panic, but at the same time, you're saying to each other, we've got to tighten this down. We can't give up gains like that. Now it's Jackson. And his throw is going to be incomplete. Well, he certainly thought he had a window to push that ball downfield, but as soon as he released the throw, the corner was there to slam that window shut. They come up now, third and five, following the incomplete pass. Here's Jackson to throw. Setting up the screen here to Edwards. And he will have a Ravens first down. They needed five there on third down. He winds up getting seven. Surely that was necessarily a safety valve for a check down throw on third down. Sometimes just trying to find the open guy and get him the ball. He did exactly that and found a way to pick up a first down. So they'll come up in Bengals territory now with a first and 10 at the 49-yard line. Throwing there, but this pass is going to wind up incomplete. Well, they've been back on their heels a little bit here on this drive. But a chance to exhale just a little bit there with incompletion on first down. Now they have to gear up, try and get two more stops, and escape this drive. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. Jackson will throw again. He finds the rookie, Zay Flowers. And he's got another first down as the tackle is going to be made at the Bengals' 22-yard line. A very solid gain of 27. Good strong throw and catch right there. And so far in this game, the alleys have been open for them to get completions, and they're taking advantage of it. They'll throw on first down with Jackson. Throwing out left and finding Reichler. And he's brought down after a very nice game. That's back-to-back -back plays of over 20 yards. Not quite enough to get into the end zone, but what a nice play there. He makes the catch, tries to turn up field and get to the pylon, but doesn't quite get there. But they're going to be set up with a first and goal from very short range. They'll run here with Edwards. They'll take it into the end zone for a Ravens touchdown. Gus Edwards, a touchdown run there from a yard out. And his guys now an extra point away from taking a three-score lead. Now Tucker to add the PAT. He's got it, and it's 17-0. So that one, an eight-play drive. It spans 75 yards. And it was polished off by the Gus Edwards touchdown run.
Tucker now to kick it away following the touchdown. From a couple yards deep, he'll bring it out of the end zone. And the decision to come out of the end zone is going to cost him five yards as he's taken down right at the 20. The Bengals offense returns to the field. And we don't want to call this desperation time, especially in the second quarter, but you're you don't down. don't want to. No, but oh, let me finish. Okay, my bad. And you're down three scores already. You've done nothing offensively, nothing on the scoreboard. That's that's not a good combination. I think you now just you called it. I think you just called it desperation time. I, I think did. you did. But yeah. let's face it, you mentioned this to me in a break earlier in the game. The energy level hasn't been there right from the start. We've noticed that. They've got to find a way to get on their toes and start punching instead of retreating to use a boxing analogy. He'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four. They'd love to just strike back with a touchdown right here, and if it's a long play, so be it. But the main goal, get a couple of first downs, run some plays, run some clock, allow their defense to get a chance to catch their breath, settle down, and relax a little bit after they just gave up a score. A second down pass play there, but it's incomplete. Had an open man that time, but ended up putting a little too much heat on it, don't you think, partner? Absolutely, just needed a touch more air under it. Instead, he fired an absolute bullet. Now they face a third down and four after that incompletion on second down. Here's Browning. And it's going to be incomplete. He was able to catch it there on the right sideline, but out of bounds says the line judge, and it's going to bring up fourth down. Sometimes it's just not your day. There's another failure right there on third down. On now to punt, Brad Robbins. And he'll get this away into the icy winter air. They'll score that a 36-yard punt. And the Ravens, they'll take over. Gus Edwards heading back onto the field. It's the second quarter. His team has the lead, but I think he's hoping for a little bit more production out of himself. And we often talk about preaching patience to a runner when things are a little bumpy in the early going. But we have to do the same thing with the offensive line. They can't wait to halftime to make the adjustments. They have to do it from series to series for those surface tablets come into play. <laughs> Check out what the defense is doing and see if they can find a better way to run it. So they search for that patience here now. They'll start by running the option to the right. Two yards the gain on the keeper at its second down. Well, anytime you decide to use your quarterback as a runner, most of the time when you design a play, you're expected to break a little bit bigger than this one because when you run him on short gains, your risk reward and him taking hits, I'm not sure that's the payoff they were looking for. From the 43, here's a second and eight. Throwing is Jackson. The short one there caught by Likely. It'll go down as a gain of six. And now it's third and three. I know the halftime's approaching, but I don't think he's going to want to take a break. That's his fifth catch. Yeah, they've really been targeting the tight end. This offense so far on third down, they've been good. Three for four thus far. Here it's third and three. And they'll try and run the option to pick it up. That is not going to be any help as they dump him behind the line of scrimmage. That winds up being a four-yard loss and leads to fourth down. And that's what I'd like to see out of this defense, a little fire, a little toughness. It hasn't been the best first half for them, but they did do a nice job there, forcing a loss on that play. Facing fourth down, Baltimore will punt. Jordan Stout out there. Back deep for Cincinnati, the rookie Charlie Jones. This is taken at the 15. There will be 37 yards there on the punt, and the Bengals will take over here first and 10. So now the Bengal offensive unit back out onto the field. And three and out on the last drive, no points on the scoreboard. A little soul searching now? I would say so, and they need to help out their defense a little bit. They've had to be on the yeah, field a lot position. more than normal, put them in some tough spots. But what's the old adage? When you get another chance, it gives you a better chance to do it right. to throw Browning. He gets this with the boy. And they're going to get this beyond the 40 before he's taken down. And a nice gain of 21 yards. 
Well, these guys have definitely been outplayed in the first half, but I like their countenance. I like the way that they haven't panicked out there, the way they're carrying themselves. They're starting to move the ball, and what you have to do, maintain your poise and start to put together some drives. Mixon with a first down carry. And he takes it past the 45 and down at the 46. In on the stop, the former Georgia Bulldog, Roquan Smith. If you're a coach, you'll absolutely take that run every time on first down because it really sets you up to go in a number of directions here on second. From the 46, here's second down and five. Now Browning. Over the middle, he finds Higgins. And he's going to be taken down with the first down at the Ravens' 44-yard line. They picked up five yards last time. Now they double it and get 10 here. Now that's the kind of big play you'd like to see. This first half, it hasn't gone their way, and they could use a shot in the arm, something to perk them up a bit. And they get one here in the passing game. On first and 10, Brown, but it's caught on the right side at Smith. So the completion good for seven there. And that's going to bring up second down. I know sometimes we can get fooled when we watch him make catches as we just saw him do there because he really looks like a wide receiver the way he goes about his business. Yeah, 230, 240 range. Yeah, not, not super huge. Maybe not counted on to be that inline point of attack blocker that we used to have in the good old days. But you can flex him out. You can run wide receiver routes with him. You can make him a primary target. And that's how he'll shred a defense. It'll go down as a two-yard loss, and it brings up a third down. That's the danger, Charles, of running plays like this for your wide receiver. They can hit big, or they can be duds. Yeah, you're exactly right about that, because if they're forced to try and go around defenders behind the line of scrimmage, sometimes you can give yardage in order to gain it. But in this case, they gave yardage and didn't get it back. Now a third down throw, but it misses the target incomplete. No move to get the offense off the field. They're going on fourth and five. Looking to throw. Brown, and he's brought down. Can't do anything with the football. It's a sack and a turnover on downs. The Bengals try it, but it doesn't work out. And the Ravens are going to get the football back. Uh, the D brought the house, they called the blitz, and they get to the quarterback, overwhelming the O-line. And I would love to know, and we'll find out later on, was that called before the play, or did they audible into it? Because defenses change plays as well as offenses. Sometimes they get the set they want, they go right to the blitz, and in this case, they nailed it. Got right to the quarterback, no chance on that fourth down. Good starting field position for them here as they come up first and 10 at their own 46. Jackson now. He finds his man. It's Charlie Kohler. And down he goes at the 45 after a pickup of nine. Nice rhythm throw there on first down. He located his tight end, made a nice easy pitch and catch. Hoping he can break a tackle or two. Wasn't able to do that there, but still good yardage. Just need a yard here. Second and one. Jackson leaves it with Edwards on the draw. And good space to operate there as he takes this down inside the 35-yard line. It's a pickup of 11 at a Baltimore first down. Brandon, I think you and I were both raised the same way in the game of football. You run to set up the pass, but I think we've discovered in this NFL, a lot of teams pass to set up the run. And that's what they've done throughout this game. They've aired it out, thrown it around the yard. Now they've come back to the running game, and they find a way to be successful with it. Over the middle, complete. It's Flowers. So the completion good for six yards, and that will bring up second down. One thing you're hoping for when you run drag routes, you're able to hit a receiver in stride, and he can pick up a lot of yardage after the catch. But in this situation, the defense was effective, able to stop him before he could get a good head of steam going. This second and four. 
Now it's Jackson. He finds Bateman over the middle. Hang on now. We're going to pause here. We've got an injured player. Well, now they're going to come out and take a look at this injury, and we'll be back in a moment. First and ten, it's Jackson. And he'll protect himself at the end here as he winds up getting pretty decent yardage. Nice work to get seven out of that, and it's second down. Certainly not the way they drew it up in the playbook, but that's why they love this guy back there. He sees things breaking down, and he's more than capable of finding an escape route and still getting a decent gain. Now Jackson on second down. Throwing the out route incomplete. That's Towers. And the Ravens are going to be looking at first and goal as they move this down to the four-yard line. And with just four seconds left in this first half, a timeout call. So with four seconds to go in the half, here's the field goal unit onto the field. From the left half, should be a fairly easy one here. Tucker's kick is good, and that will extend their lead even further. So this lead, Charles, just continuing to swell here in the first half. Well, it's interesting. When we talked to them prior to the game, they told us that their game plan was take no prisoners, and they've lived up to it so far because everything has worked. No guarantee that'll continue, but all in all, this coach's staff's got to be very pleased by what they've seen. So barring a touchback, this likely the final act of the half as the kick is away. So we reach halftime in what's been a fairly one-sided game so far. As we'll get you down the coast to Orlando for Jonathan Coachman at REA Sports Halftime Report. Coach! Okay, Brandon, back to you guys in just a moment. But welcome everyone to our Creative Village Studios in the EA Sports Halftime Report. All right, Coach, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. ready to receive it and they've got the lead as well as we resume play in the second half and his guys will get the football right at the 20 yard line the Raven offense set to start this third quarter Jackson and the Ravens come up now first and 10 at the 20. They'll run with Edwards here to begin the drive. And he'll be tackled at the 23 after a gain of three. So that time they got the left guard with a hold. And let's face it, in today's ball, 
You might have that 330-pound guy you're supposed to clear out of there. You might need a little bit of extra help by grabbing the jersey and trying to ride him out. So following the hold, they're in a bit of a hole here with a first and 20. The drive will start with an option going left. And a short gain here across the 10 to the 12. Two yards the gain on the keeper, and it's second down. Well, obviously, they would have at least liked to have gotten back to the original line of scrimmage. Instead, now, they're dealing with second and long. I thought they would have passed it after the penalty. Probably wish they would have now. To throw is Jackson. This one will go to the 28-yard line. Good yardage there on the scramble, and all of a sudden, they're left with a third and two. Much more manageable. Fast, slow, it doesn't matter. If you give a quarterback enough room to escape, he can hit you for a big game. You've got to give him a little more focus moving forward. They'll come to the line, needing only two yards to gain the first here. On third down, here's Edwards. And they get him down but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. That one good for 13 and a Raven first down. We all love to have a home run hitter in the backfield. Guy can take him the distance, but a short yardage trying to pick up first downs. That big guy, always oh, a nice luxury to have, isn't he? Jackson on first down. Well, that's complete to the fullback, Ricard. They'll give him four yards there, and it's second down. Now that's often a surprise for the defensive guys when they see the big fella slide out of the backfield and catch the ball. Not something they usually go over in practice very often. Ball spotted at the 45. Here's a second down at six. Jackson. To the right side, into the hands of Flowers. It's a first down, his fourth catch of the game after having three in the first half. Partner, you know when we call a game, we talk about Lamar Jackson and his speed and his elusiveness and the ability to get him on the ground, how tough that is for a defense. But how about his development as a thrower, as a professional? Throwing now, Jackson on first down. And that throw behind his man, he missed him, incomplete. It sort of looks like they stopped some fight in them on this series because it seemed like things were headed for the red zone. But this defense gets two more stops. They can keep them out of that area. After the incomplete pass here now is second and 10. Jackson, option right. And now off to the races, down the right side. And they will finally get to him down at the Bengals, 13. 36 yards on the play. What a run there. I mean, you've got speed, elusiveness, escapability, all rolled into one. And we all know that quarterbacks are coached. They get the ball to the guys who can do all the things you just described. You want those guys who have speed, elusiveness, and escapability all rolled into one with the ball in their hands. And guess what? It's him. So there's no sense in throwing it or handing it off when you can do all of that yourself. Meanwhile, Jackson's throw pulled in by Aguilar. And down inside the 10 here before he's out of bounds right around the 7. And that's good for a gain of 6. And that'll bring up second down. Jackson he'll get this to Flowers left side only able to gain a couple there and that's going to bring up third and two here's Jackson but he missed him and it's incomplete that was well played but that was also an example of a corner who understands his coverage realized he had support behind him 
and could be a little more aggressive in the shorter zone and did exactly that, knocking that pass away. The offense staying out. They're going to go on fourth and two. They'll run for it. It's Edwards. And try to push his way forward, but I think he's going to be short. And he is short. They'll get neither the touchdown nor the first down. And this 11-play drive is going to lead to nothing on the scoreboard. Partner, when you see a running play stop short like that, you just know that the defensive front, they won the battle of leverage and created the push back into the opposing backfield. And for the offensive coordinator, whether you had one yard to go or 20 yards to go on fourth down, now you're probably saying, oh, maybe I should have passed it, right? Yeah, hindsight is always 20-20. Three tight ends in the ball game here on first and ten. Mixon gets the nod to start the drive. And nothing much materializing there on the first down run. He'll get a couple and that's it. That first down play, all you want to do is wedge out any type of space and try and create enough room that if you have to run the punter out there, he can successfully complete the punt. Yeah, he didn't get a ton there, but at least some positive yardage. Here's a second and eight. Off the play fake. Browning. This to the sideline and nearly intercepted. Oh, he had that in his grasp. Couldn't get it. Instead, it'll bring up third down. And I think he was a little surprised to see the ball sitting out there like that. That's a ball he had a chance to come away with, but it winds up an incomplete pass. to throw on third down. Browning. And that will be incomplete. Well, they weren't scared to let it fly, but it falls to the ground and brings up fourth down. I'm sure this isn't a novel thought, but maybe run some simpler routes instead of trying to get it all back in one shot. Defense certainly appears to be ready for them. Try and get it back little by little instead of in big chunks. The punt team on now is from their end zone. They get it away. Fielded at the 43. 35 yards that time on the punt. And the Ravens set up well to begin their drive as it'll begin in enemy territory already. Now the Baltimore offense heading back out onto the field. And last time they had it fourth and goal. Rolled the dice. Didn't get it. Now they've got to put that behind them. Try to put together another drive. A simple tip of the cap, a nod of the head to the defense. Congratulations, you got us last time. But you didn't hold us the whole time. We got down to position. We were able to be in position to score. Let's go ahead and attack again. Continue to have that kind of confidence. Not worry about the one play that didn't allow them to get into the end zone. And this time they'll be trying to get it into the end zone. We'll see what they do. And this defense not ready for that one as they'll take this down inside the 25. Sometimes it's hard to believe, but... There are times this game is about patience, isn't it? Has had the game he expected, but that run there, that may get him going. I was just going to say, maybe that gives him a little juice because you're right, he struggled, especially in that first half. Yeah, and I know the great ones always think to themselves, just hang in there, just one big carry away from busting this open. That's a good start for him. Give him 10 yards on the pickup, and that'll bring up a second and just about a few inches here. Now, that was an excellent run, and when you see that happen, that's when you're seeing guys doing their job and then some people doing a little bit more. Offensive linemen and tight ends, they're expected to block, but the wide receivers, all they want to do is catch passes, so when they block on a big-time running play and create extra space, you've got to hit the jackpot there. And he goes backwards here, losing yardage back to the 16. With his size, he's a tough man to bring down, but they do a nice job there stopping his progress and not allowing him to get back to the line of scrimmage. And a nickel look here for the Bengals as they try to defend this on third. In motion, Aguilar. Now Jackson taps his forward jet sweep. He's not going to get there. That won't even be close. It was blown up in the backfield. Well, they tried to catch him by surprise, I think, there with that little pop pass on third down, but no luck. You're right about no luck, but I did like the idea. I like the thought process. Make an unconventional call on third down sometimes. It can pop big. In this case, it didn't. They'll try and throw for it with Jackson. And it's incomplete. They cannot convert. 
And they turn it over. John Harbaugh not afraid to go for it this time. Doesn't work out. And the Bengals will get the football back. So they've gone for it twice now on fourth down of this game and both times unsuccessful. I wish we could hear the headsets now between the head coach and the offensive coordinator. Now that they're 0 for 2, if they get into a third situation, head coach might say, hey, you got anything for this one? <laughs> might give radio silence back. <laughs> They go play action here on first down. And this one is incomplete. Zone coverage there, and they were playing deep. That makes it obviously a little bit harder to run by guys. And that time, there was not much of a window to get the ball in there, and it winds up incomplete. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. Mix it up the middle. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. Two yards the loss, and now third and 12. This defense is just flat getting after it. They have not given up much of anything in the run game. Case in point right there. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. Back to throw. Browning. And he's caught. And he's going to get this one across the 30-yard line. A third down gain of 19. Well, we talk all the time about playing situational football. And right now, I think the scoreboard is dictating what they need to do. Where they are in this game, they've got to push the ball downfield, take their shots, try and get big chunks of yardage in a short amount of time. That was a nice play there. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. Looking to throw. Browning. It connects quickly to Jamar Chase. Call it a gain of six on the play, and it'll be second down. Nothing fancy on first down, but a very consistent type of a play. Hit that slant. A lot of people call it an extension of the running game, and it can be if that pass is completed, because you hit a guy on the run like that, you often can go for big yardage. Sets him up nicely for second down, staying ahead of schedule. He'll be stopped shy of the 45 despite a great move. They give him about four on the play, but he's marked short, so it'll be third and about the length of the football. That ground game contained again there, Charles, and that's really a big reason that they're trailing right now. They give a lot of credit to that defensive front. That's exactly what they worked for all week to try and take away the run game, make them one-dimensional in the battle of game plans. Theirs has been superior. Now throwing on third down there, but he cannot connect. Looks like another empty possession offensively. And you're at that point in the game where you can't afford too many more of these. So this is going to require some heavy thinking on the sideline to figure out what they can do to crack this defense. The Bengals bring out their punter now as he'll punt it away for the fourth time today. This is taken at about the 14. It's a 40-yard punt, four yards on the return. And it will be first and 10 as they take over. Here comes the Raven offense now, ready for another possession. And on the last drive, they were in field goal range. They just opted not to kick it, didn't get it. How does that change the mentality this go around? I don't think it changes much for the head coach because this is what he preaches all the time. Attack at all times in any spot on the field. And he likes touchdowns, not field goals. Now, your field goal kicker, you've got to make sure you nurse him through and say, okay, don't worry about it. When we need you, you've got to be ready to go. And the team, of course, loves to see points on the board. So let's see if it changes a little bit if they're in the same spot again. Yeah, we'll see what the decision is here if they get to that spot. I think he's got to be careful not to force anything into coverage right there. There weren't really any throwing lanes, but the best part for him, he's got second and third down to fall back on. Second and ten. Here's Jackson again. And his throw is going to be incomplete. And now offensively, it's third and ten, and I'm just thinking to myself, actors always say, what's my motivation before a big scene? Right now, the play caller is thinking, what have I done before that's worked well that I can go to right now? Yeah, because they were pretty successful in the first half scoring points. Haven't done anything so far here in the second half. On third down, Jackson has taken in by his big tight end. And he will have a Ravens first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. And while we may be looking at the scoreboard, this offense certainly is not because they're showing no signs of backing down, even with a three-score lead here in the third quarter. I think they keep taking their shots, 
They've seen blown leads happen throughout this league. They don't want to fall victim to it themselves. Jackson will throw again. And his throw is incomplete. We know it's not an easy job to go out and catch passes when people are trying to tackle you and knock the ball away. But the bottom line is, that's a pass he's got to have and a pass he should have caught. And we're in Baltimore. Third quarter action, second and ten. Jackson from the shotgun. A short one there, caught by Likely. They get six. That'll leave them with third and four. The completion was given up, but that's why you play zone defense, so that you can have people around the ball when it's caught, and you don't give up much run after the catch. This now a third and four. Jackson. Yeah, this pass broken up. Excellent coverage there on third down as that was not an easy one to hold on to. Oftentimes when you're losing a game and the team's still throwing with this kind of a lead, you start playing a little more physically. And they took that opportunity right there to be extremely physical and force that incompletion. The Ravens send their punter out now as he'll punt it away for the second time. On oh, the return is Jones. It'll be a 44-yard punt, six on the return. And the Bengals take over, first and ten. Cincinnati now ready to take the field. I kind of feel like they've reached a do-or-die point in this game, Charles. If they're going to try to pull off an impressive comeback, it has to start right here, right now. Yeah, now they've got a final chance to get out of this situation, but they also understand they've got to move the ball and move it fast. In addition, they need to save as much time so they can get two more possessions. They begin with a run by Mixon. And he'll be corralled well upfield right around the 40-yard line. 50 yards on the ground for him now on nine carries. First downs have not come easy, and neither have runs like this throughout this game. Absolutely not. He finally felt like, whoa, a sigh of relief. We got something going in the running game. So quickly, all the way up at the 40-yard line. Again, it's Mixon. And this play will be blown up. He'll lose yardage back at the 38. Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. But if these guys are going to chop into that deficit, they got to do a much better job in the run game. Caught behind the line of scrimmage, no yardage will be found. Looking at a second and 11 now after the loss. Inside handoff to Mixon. He'll get about three as he's brought down right around the 42. I do know from experience that when you slow down someone's running game, you're now doing the dictating on defense. And guess what? Now you're getting ready to tee off on their quarterback because they have to throw it all the time. But you still have to be alert for the draws and other plays of that nature to make sure you don't get hurt. Now Browning. time on what's going to wind up being the final play of the third quarter. We have played three quarters. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now in Baltimore. It's the Bengals. They've got the football, but they trail here as we get rolling in quarter number four. So the big play gets him all the way down to the outskirts of the red zone here for first and ten. From the gun, a give to Mixon. And he can only manage to get a couple. Second and eight coming up. Well, any lane that might have been open there was closed pretty quickly, and that was because the defensive front, they won that battle at the point of attack at the line of scrimmage. They used great leverage, held their spot, and stacked him up. From the 21, here's the second and eight. A handoff to Mixon. And he's going to be down close to a first down at the Ravens' 15-yard line. It's a gain of six, moves him to a manageable third and two situation. Not too many offenses want to turn down long drives, but when you're down what they are, they've got to pay it off with some points. 
And this offense on third down today, they're right at about the league average, 40%, four for 10. Here it's third and two. Complete, Smith has it. And he will be very close to a first down, but I see the closed fist of the referee, and that means fourth down. Well, it wasn't a big strike, but that completion put them in really great range. What do we have now, fourth and inches? Yeah, it's not more than a half a foot. You know what I would do here. You would always go for it. <laughs> I'm one of those guys. Throw left side complete to Chase. And he is going to have the Bengals first down as he pushes forward for a couple on fourth and inches. Felt compelled to go for it there on fourth down, trailing in the fourth quarter. They got it done. And there's always a lot of pressure on a fourth down call. Doesn't matter the distance. You still have to get it done, as you noted, and they did. They go back to the ground now with Mixon. And he'll take this one inside the 10 down to the 8. Give him three on first down. It'll set up a second and seven. He's had success on this drive, but not on this play. Finally, they bowed up defensively. I think they were determined not to let him take it pretty much all the way down the field. Yeah, it looks like they handled their run responsibilities correctly this time. When we call them run fits, everyone was in the right place. And they'll get this from the eight to the five. Pick up a three. So a decent deficit at this stage in the second half. Four down territory? No doubt about it. There's not a chance that he hasn't looked ahead and said, okay, if we gain yardage on this play, this is what we'll do going forward. If we lose yardage, this is the play call that I'll have ready. To throw Browning. And this is going to be incomplete. And that's another play that's painted the picture of this game overall. It's been a blowout. It's been continually fueled by big turnovers and stops for one side and an inability to advance the ball from the other. Yeah, field goal does you no good, so they're going to stay out there and go for it on fourth. Got to try it here. He's back to throw. And it's incomplete. They cannot convert, and they turn it over. The Bengals try it, but it doesn't work out. And this long drive is going to wind up yielding nothing. So that's the second time this game they've given it up on fourth down. They're now one for three on fourth down conversion tries. But they must feel good about what they're doing, right? They continue to go for it on fourth down. Give the defense a lot of credit, though. They've stopped them two out of three times. Usually, you have fourth down plays that you have dialed up and ready to go and you think are going to be successful. Not so far in this game. The drive starts with a carry by Edwards. And he'll power his way forward for about four yards there on the first down carry. Now I'm guessing you'd say this is kind of the key here. Grind out some yardage, work on that clock, see if you can continue to tick it down. Definitely, you want to bleed things out at this point, right? Continue to possess the football, gain some yardage, and put the onus on the defense. Do they have to use timeouts? What are they going to do to stop you? You're taking charge. Here's Edwards again on second down. And just not much to be had there. One yard out to the 10. I know that speed is the hallmark of today's NFL game, but the key to good rushing defense is still having your linebackers set the edge. They'll need five on this play to move the sticks. Now it's Jackson. Complete to Likely. And he will have a Ravens first down by about a yard as they find a way to convert there on third down and five. He's been the go-to guy. They needed a big play there on third down, went his way, it worked out. Doesn't matter whether they've scouted it or that they think he's going to get the ball. He has a knack for finding his way open and completing the connection. Up the middle, here's Edwards. And he'll take this up only to about his 18-yard line. Daxton Hill there to make the stop on defense. Brandon, I've got to think this offensive line has got some smiles on its faces. And, and I know it sounds crazy, but they practiced for this back in training camp. They knew they'd be in situations where it'd be extra defenders in the box coming after them, trying to keep them from locking down a game. Right now, they want to show the world they're up to the challenge. Limited running room as he'll get about three to the 21. 
some of the most unselfish players on any football team? Defensive tackles, because we ask them to just eat up blocks and allow other people to make tackles. But when he can make a play himself, as we just saw there, that's a big day. Now it's Jackson. Throw caught by Flowers. And I don't think he got there, no. He's short by maybe a foot, maybe. Call it fourth and inches. If this were baseball, we'd call this small ball. Instead of pushing it downfield, they throw a short pass trying to pick up the first down, but the defense rallies to the football and stops him short, bringing up a fourth down. The Ravens send their punter out now as he'll come on to kick this one away. Fair catch called for and taken right near the 30-yard line. A 40-yard punt, no return, and they will take over first and 10. Here's Browning. He completes it to Boyd. And he'll be out of bounds across the 30-yard line. Timing is so important on a route like this because he's going to line up out right and then cut straight across the field. I think the ball might have come out a counter two too late because by the time he was able to secure it, not much of a chance to turn it upfield. Throwing again on second down. Browning. Short throw to Smith. And he gets this up across the 35 before he's out of bounds. It'll go as a gain of four. And this will wind up being a third and three. That was an okay hook up there with his tight end. But unfortunately, they didn't get the kind of yards they had hoped for. That's going to bring up third down. Coming up here looking for three yards to pick up the first. On third and short, they'll try and pick it up through the air. And it's complete right back in the hands of Smith. And he's brought down short. Two yards there, needed four. You got the big lead defensively. Willing to give them that underneath stuff, right? And this is why you work on your tackling. Tackle them after the catch, inbounds, keep the clock running. Just go ahead and bleed the game out that way. As expected, they're going for it to keep the drive alive. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And getting this just shy of midfield, they'll spot it at the 49. Uh, no reason not to try it there, and they do indeed convert on fourth. Well, those are the types of plays they probably wish they had made more of in the first three quarters, and this deficit is going to be tough to overcome here in the fourth, but a nice first down and a pickup on that throw. Yeah, and this is where his coaches... You're looking for effort and execution, even though the scoreboard is going against you. You want to find out who's going to fight, who's going to scrap, who's going to keep their heads up and continue to play. A big play there for Cincinnati. 46 yards. To get back in this ball game, big plays are going to be necessary. And here's one right on cue. Coming up with three scores here in the fourth is not going to be an easy task. But that's good work there to bite off a chunk of yards. They'll stick with the passing game as he looks to throw. This is caught. Touchdown. Irv Smith Jr., a five-yard touchdown. And the Bengals are finally on the board here in the fourth quarter. Well, they needed three scores to have any chance. There's the first of the three as they get into the end zone. Yeah, Brandon, I think that our guys at Next Gen Stats in charge of the win probability are probably saying your chances still aren't great. But now, you still got more than three minutes to go. You got to focus on the task at hand, which is going to be getting the football back as quickly as possible. Two scores down, three timeouts left. Still a chance if they can somehow get this one back. And this one recovered by the hands team for the Ravens. Well, fourth quarter, they felt like they needed the football back. Unfortunately, they couldn't get it. And 
I know we've brought analytics into the game, and someone has said here that the data says that when a team's expecting an onside kick, 80% of the time, the team expecting it, they do actually recover the ball, which is what we saw here. I just wonder if that number is much more of a anecdotal type of a number, kind of like when the coaches tell us, well, when you score on special teams, 93% <laughs> of the time you win the game. I'm still waiting to see that number is empirical. the middle it's Edwards and he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage he'll lose a yard there and it's second and 11 and what do they start thinking about burning these timeouts they've got all three still defensively to me you have to start right now here's the time and that means you've got to stop them on defense not give up the yardage use your timeouts in order to get the ball back and try and score yourself but now is the time to start using those timeouts and keep in mind it'll also stop the clock at the two minute warning and he gets this inside the 35-yard line. 67 yards rushing for him now on 17 carries. I know we're the era of wide open football, a lot of spread formations, more space. But there's still a spot for power football. And we just saw some of it right there. How about that run? Yeah, breaking the tackle. And, you know, late in this game, he wants a football in his hands. He's had a good day. Two minutes left to play in this football game here on EA Sports. So signs of life in what's been a dormant offense in this second half. Here's first and ten. And the result here, a pickup of eight. Leaves him with two to go on second down. And now right out of the two-minute break, we'll get a timeout used defensively with a minute 56 to go. So they come up on second down, and they can get another run like we just saw. Would likely put an end to this thing. Jackson, options out left. And down he goes, taking it inside the 10, just shy of the 5 at the 6. A good chance now to put this game on ice. This is first and goal. Going for the knockout punch. They'll try and run. And a minuscule gain of maybe a yard from the six to the five. Now the Bengals going to signal for their third and final timeout as they'll talk things over prior to this upcoming second down play. Again, it'll be Edwards, and he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. That's a big loss of three, and it brings up third down. That was well played there defensively. Two tight ends in the formation, which essentially gave him seven blockers up front. Hard to imagine with all that size and beef that they could let a tackler through, but that's exactly what happened. A loss resulted. Third and goal, Jackson. Oh, he had him. He was open, but he couldn't get it to him. It's incomplete. So many times when we talk about coverage, we're just talking about a defender running with a receiver, but a big part of it is understanding where the football is, finding it. In this case, when it arrived, it wasn't a surprise, and he was able to bat it away. Tucker's kick is good, and that will extend their lead even further. So that, not just important in the fact that it widens their lead, but really that was a textbook job of just hanging on to the football. And we know all the time that coaches talk about time of possession. Sometimes it's a stat that doesn't matter much, but in this drive, it matters a lot. They want to reduce time and score points and lock this game down. Tucker now following the made field goal set to kick it away. 
From a yard or two deep, here comes a return. And tackled at the 21-yard line, so a net negative there of four yards. So now the Bengals down by 16, 55 seconds remaining. It's been a struggle to score all day, and now they need to do it twice here late to have a chance. Now a play fake here on first down. And that is caught on the right sideline, but out of bounds, says the line judge. The throw took him a little too far at second down. When you're leading in the final quarter, your radar has to be up for any potential deep shots. And probably not the last one they're going to see in this game, not as long as they hold this lead. To throw on second and ten. Browning. Now throw right side here, going to be incomplete. Back-to-back -back incompletions, but we know this is definitely four down territory. Time not on their side. I don't think they want to try and get the first down in two installments. I think they got to go and get it right here, right now. This definitely four down territory at this point, but a critical third down here. He's got his target. That's complete. And he is going to have a Bengals first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. And after that completion, you can understand why so many teams in the league are emphasizing speed on defense at every position. The tight ends have created so many tough matchups now. If you can't run with a tight end as a linebacker, this is going to be the result every time. And he goes down. The Ravens are able to get to him. Sacked there by Jadevian Clowney. So the final seconds tick away in this Baltimore victory. And we talked so much about the turnover battle determining who wins and who loses. This game, no exception. They didn't turn the ball over at all, and they go on to victory. They looked like a smooth operation in this one, didn't they? Because you look at every facet of the game, they handled their business. Offense took care of the football, converted it into points. Defense took the ball away, gave it back to the offense. Special teams right there with them. That's the type of game a coach is going to really love and value.